Good morning, St. Paul's. So my name is Johanna Musselman, and this morning I'd like to share the story of my personal journey at St. Paul's and the essential gifts that I've discovered along the way. So my childhood friend, Dale Cavanaugh, and I don't know if Dale is here, yes she is, she recommended St. Paul's to me after she and I had reconnected in Boston in 2019. So my husband and I first came on Easter that year, and then a couple of weeks later I came for the Godspell service. So that's kind of what hooked me, Andy. <laughs> and I hope we'll be able to revive that tradition um, next year. That's pretty awesome. So I took, kind of took the summer off and then thought a lot about where my church home might be. And, and about two years ago, exactly, you know, I decided that St. Paul's would be that place. And so three things I noticed about St. Paul's, I'm assuming many of you noticed this as well, uh, the warm and welcoming people, first of all, uh, the exquisite music that lifts my heart, whether I'm on, at home on Zoom or here in person, and a deep and abiding commitment to the greater community, and that comes through worship and through service. So these are all great gifts, to be sure, but I really had no idea how truly essential my connection to St. Paul's would be until March 2020, when we all went into lockdown at the start of the pandemic. So as I've been thinking about this, thank you, Leah and Elizabeth, for inviting me to, to share my story. I thought about four areas of focus, um, worship, giving back, learning, and engagement. And in terms of worship, I'm not sure if my experience is unique, but as the months of the pandemic went by, I described St. Paul to my friends and family as one of my lifelines. You know, it wasn't quite, you know, appointment TV, but on Sunday mornings, I needed to dial in uh, to Sunday worship via Zoom. So I enjoyed singing the hymns. I don't know if any of my neighbors could hear me singing. <laughs> Hopefully not, but um, those are, you know, are so meaningful to me. And then, and then reciting the words of the Nicene Creed and the Lord's Prayer, which are, you know, the touchstones of our shared Episcopal liturgy. Um, it just kept me coming back every week, no matter what. Um, I also found connection and comfort at the coffee hour in the Zoom breakout room. I mean, who knew you could be randomly thrown into a room with four or five people you've never met before? But I really hadn't come to coffee hour much in my early days at St. Paul's, so I met lots of people, and then I looked forward to seeing them again. In, in terms of giving back, you know, early in the pandemic, I realized there were still ways to participate safely in the ministries outside the parish. So I happily ordered books for the prison book ministry. Um, I picked up apples and granola bars for the common cathedral lunch, the Be Safe lunches. And then this past July, I, we gathered safely for the very first time for me in the St. Paul's kitchen to help prepare a hot meal for the Be Safe kids. And that team effort really felt normal, you know, for the first time in a year. Um, in terms of learning, I realized I could keep learning despite COVID. I, I attended adult ed last fall, my first time doing that, with Elise, uh, amazing program about civil discourse, which was needed then, it's needed now. I think we, we got to keep going with that. And then I wanted to just call out St. Paul's University. So what a novel concept. Where could you go, gather online, and learn about neuroscience or, or, or the science of the eye or art beading or have a dance party with your grandchild on Valentine's Day? I mean, that was just, you know, an amazing opportunity. And it really gave folks a chance to not only learn but teach and then further connect with others here. And then um, in some of the topics that Jeff recently just mentioned, I extended my understanding of some of the key issues in our larger community by engaging with the newly reformed GBIO, the Inter Greater Boston Interfaith Organization. And it just opened my eyes, uh, again, as Jeff was referencing in the sermon. So in terms of engagement, a highlight of my past year was the opportunity to participate in the Child and Youth Ministries Steering Committee. Thank you, Isaac. <laughs> um, I was privileged to be part of that committed team, Laura, <laughs> others who are here today, 
who engaged with the parish. We did a survey, we did interviews, and we, we had some focus groups. And then my opportunity to assist with the, re the analysis, the research, writing the report and presenting to Vestry, which almost all was done remotely, was very meaningful to me. It really connected with my, my talents, my skills. Um, so I've described some of the essential gifts that I received from St. Paul's and some of the ways that I strived to give back. Uh, I wanted to say that throughout the pandemic, the St. Paul's family demonstrated strength, resiliency, and a continued commitment to the core values. As Jeff shared with us last week, the connection to the community, the support of music and the arts, and the commitment to outside ministry. So those, I think, have been evident throughout the whole past year and a half. And if you look around today, I see a lot of familiar faces it's, it's the people who made commitments to St. Paul's, giving their time and their talent. Things happen here because of people, whether it's our clergy, the staff, the wardens, the vestry, Andy and the choir, the Sunday school teachers, youth group leaders, ministry leaders, and so many more. And I want to give a sh special shout out to the tech vergers, because those jobs didn't exist a couple years ago. <laughs> and they keep us going here. So this is the time of year that my husband Dave and I start to think about how maybe we could give back financially to St. Paul's. Um, so I'd want, like to quote a brief passage from St. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, which says, each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So when I read Jeff's letter about the Pledge Appeal that came this week, I thought not only about the essential gifts I received from St. Paul's, but also the gifts I can give back to St. Paul's. And um, time, talent, and treasure are all essential for the continuation and the expansion of the missions here and the programs at St. Paul's. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak today.